I love a bit of early morning team news and we've got it for the Springboks and for France for that World Cup quarterfinal on Sunday. Interesting selections from Jacques Nianaba and Razi Erasmus and as expected, Antoine Dupont returns for the French. So put a comment down below. What do you make of the team selections and how do you see this game going? Two, I think, pretty evenly matched sides. It is going to be fascinating on Sunday night at the Stade de France. Also, make sure you like the video and that you're subscribed to the channel. But let's get into it. So I'm going to start with the Springboks first of all. There's probably two headlines, two main headlines from what I can tell from their team selection. Number one, Marnie Libok starts at fly half. Andre Pollard is on the bench. And the other one is about those replacements. 5-3 split on the bench, not a 6-2, not a 7-1. The traditional 5-3 split, which they have done previously, but isn't something we particularly associate with the Springboks. So those are my probably the two most interesting things. I've just watched the press conference of Sia Khaleesi and Jacques Nianaba and Nianaba has said that there's, there's no reason why any of those other players haven't been selected. So if you want to talk about Vincent Koch being on the bench instead of Trevor Niakane, for example, Dwayne Vermeulen getting the nod over Jasper Visa, it's more about selection for this game and how they think they can best expose any sort of weaknesses in the French. It is a team that they believe is best place to go and win the quarterfinal this weekend. I think the only player that probably is to do with game time and fitness is Lucanio Am. They've said that he's looking really good in training, but I think the fact that he just hasn't played means they probably don't want to chuck him in for a World Cup quarterfinal. But maybe if they get through this game, we might see him later on in the tournament. We uh, will wait and see on that one. So overall, it's a Springbok squad that's in good health and we've seen them rotate throughout the World Cup. That's what they tend to do. And this is a team they think is best placed to beat France. So let's talk about Probably there's two big things, first of all. Marnie Libok starting at fly half. Andre Pollard is on the bench. And the big conversation here really comes down to goal kicking. I actually like the fact that they've gone with Libok. And I know that on the channel over the last weeks and month or so, I've fairly consistently spoken about Marnie Libok and his kicking from the tee. The reason I actually quite like the fact that they've gone with him is... They're sticking to their identity in the over the last couple of years, the box have looked to expand that game plan. And this year in particular, Libok, I think, has been a crucial part of that. In fact, other than the Ireland game, you look at the stats of when he started at fly half, the Springboks have won and they've scored a lot of tries as well. And I think from 10, he's been quite a pivotal figure in them being able to expand that attack. And I think if that is how you have tried to build an identity of your team in the way in which you attack, I like the fact that you stick with it when it comes to one of the biggest games or the biggest game you've had over the last couple of years. It's not to say that kicking isn't a concern, and it is, but I still think that if that is the route you've gone down, you stick with him at fly half. Could be totally wrong there. We'll see how it goes. And it's a funny one, isn't it, with Libok? Because he's not a bad kicker. He's just an inconsistent one. Like We might see him against France at the weekend, knock over five from five. We'll all be there thinking, well, what on earth were we talking about? We saw him against the All Blacks at Twickenham, for example. He kicked really, really well. We then saw it against Ireland where he missed a number of kicks. And in those tight games, that could be absolutely crucial. So I understand the concerns. I just think given the fact that Andre Pollard hasn't had much game time, that we have a pretty decent body of evidence of what Marnie Libok can do, then I quite like the fact they've gone with him and you've still got Pollard to come off the bench and maybe in the way we saw them use kind of an old veteran on the Lions, on the Lions tour in that last test in the Lions, come on and kick the pivotal goals late on, possibly. I don't think the game will be away from them at that point. I think it will be a tight game. So I think Pollard could come on and still have a really big impact. But that's my reasoning for why I like the fact that they've gone with Marnie Libok, but I fully understand concerns. And I already know there are going to be plenty of Springbok fans in the comments saying, Andre Pollard has to start at fly half. Let's wait and see. Let's talk about the bench as well then. So 5-3, they do sometimes do it. Jacques Nianaba in that press conference was quick to point out that that deciding match in that Lions series, they went with a 5-3 bench. They don't do it often though, in all honesty. So whilst he's saying it is something they've done, we do normally see a 6-2 or obviously the 7-1 more recently. I'm surprised they've gone 5-3 because the French are such a big physical pack that I would have thought maybe the 6-2 was the better option. But then I suppose if we look at it, you've got Faf coming off the bench in place of Reiner. You want Pollard as that another option, possible kicking option, a different kind of style 10 as well. And then Vili LaRue. I can kind of understand why all those guys are there, but 
I don't know. I just think I'm so used to seeing the box go 6-2 that I'm wondering whether they will wish they had some of that power coming on late on in the game. But there's always a risk, whatever... 5-3, 6-2, whatever you go with, there's always some element of risk of whether you're leaving yourself short somewhere else. Kobus Reinach at nine is really interesting. Um, I think he's played brilliantly and I'm kind of pleased to see him there and that I think he's played his way into the team. Faf we know is excellent as well. And actually looking at that bench from the box, and this maybe comes back to the Nia Kane, Vincent Koch discussion as well, is it... Is it also down to experience? I mentioned this in the video of the All Blacks yesterday and their team selection. I thought the All Blacks bench was very much a bench selected with experience coming on in the final stages of a game in mind. And I wonder whether that's similar here for the Springboks. You look at those three backs, you've got Faf, Andre Pollard, Vili LaRue coming off the bench. That is experience when you need it in the dying moments of those games. I know Trevor Niakane is a pretty experienced player as well, but Vincent Koch even more so. Is that kind of partly what they're looking at there, I wonder, and how valuable that could be when it comes to a knockout game? Um, tell you what, let's get on to the French and then I'll come back to an area that I maybe have a very slight concern over the Springboks in just a moment. So let's go with France. They have gone with a 6-2 bench, by the way. And the big news, obviously, Antoine Dupont returns, which since Monday we've been expecting. He's been back in training, fractured his cheekbone a couple of weeks ago. That is going to be interesting. I and mean, Antoine Dupont is such a good player and I'm sure they've received all the medical assurances they need that it is safe. But I can't think of a team I would rather face less than the Springboks having fractured my cheekbone a couple of weeks ago. And they will be physical with him. I think they'll look to do what Aaron Smith did against him in the opening game. Do you remember Aaron Smith actually kept Dupont pretty quiet, which was... I suppose a great sign for the French in that they were able to win without him dictating the game. I think the box will do similar to try and get in his face and make life as uncomfortable as possible for him. But the big thing with the French actually in their team selection is it's just so settled, really. I mean, Louis Bielbiere has come in over the last weeks, really, and solidified his spot on, in the team instead of Villiers. But then you've got the centre pairing that we're used to. Peno starts, Ramos at fullback is reliable. We know Jalabert will be at 10 because Untermac is injured. Jalanche, Olivon, Aldrit, that's the back row you expect. Waki and Flamont have been the first choice second rows. And likewise, with Julien Marchand injured, that's the first choice front row. So it's an incredibly settled French team. They have gone 6-2 on the bench. Seiku Makalu can also provide cover as a back. That you might sit, well, not necessarily in this game, but previously they have stuck him on the wing. So it's kind of like a 5-3-6-2 hybrid, I suppose. And I think that's probably with the power of the box in mind from the French. They also go 6-2 quite a lot, so it's not, it's not a huge set, uh, shock. But yeah, very, very settled side. The one area I wanted to mention from a tactical point of view, and I'm interested to get your guys' views on this, is... The kicking game. France are a side that kick, I'm pretty sure they kick more than anyone else in international rugby. They don't particularly want the ball unless it's in the right areas of the field. So the kicking game is going to be absolutely essential. And I actually think Cheslin Colbe is deceptively excellent under the high ball. Willems is decent as well. Aronza, maybe a few more question marks there. How the Springboks deal with the high ball and that kicking duel is crucial. And again, if we want to look back to a game where the Springboks lost earlier this year in the Rugby Championship away to New Zealand, the kicking game was an area that the All Blacks really got on top of South Africa. So for me, that is pivotal. The first 20 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes of this game and the kicking battle and how that is going, who's coming out on top, I think is just so, so important. It's going to be a brilliant, brilliant contest. Um, let me know what you make of the two teams. Let me know who do you think is going to win it. I'm sure with a lot of the Springbok fans, there's going to be concerns about Andre Pollard. I've seen no Andre Esterhazen as well, him not getting a look in in the centres, all that sort of stuff. So there's maybe more concern over the selection from the Springboks. As I say, the French are pretty settled. It's going to be a brilliant World Cup quarterfinal. I'm going to be there. I'm really looking forward to it. So comment down below. What do you make of the team? Who's going to win it? Make sure you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.